Okay, well, uh, I am here with uh, the illustrious Shelby Cook, who is uh, your role's community uh, diet educator, community dietitian. Community registered dietitian. Community registered dietitian with the Coastal Food Bank, and she is going to be our guru on this project. So I'm just going to get out of the way and let you tell the students uh, about about picture 20 people sitting virtually in front of you, 25, and uh, let you tell the students about uh, our project. Okay, so a little bit of the backstory, just so that you it kind of makes sense as to why we're doing what we chose to do. So the nutrition educators, my educators, were thinking about, well, what's a way that we can really improve the malnutrition status that we're seeing in children, okay? Um, and malnutrition, of course, is just not receiving full nutrients. So like you can be malnourished because you don't eat produce or for whatever reason. So we were focusing on produce. And one of the educators thought of HelloFresh. So where, you know, you get the recipe and the ingredients in a box, you take it home and then you watch a video. You don't watch a video in HelloFresh, but with the culinary kits, you would go home, watch the video and make it. And it helps to expose the children to more fruits and vegetables. A lot of these children only know the staples of apples, bananas, oranges. They don't know what a daikon radish is, you know, or cabbage. Mm. And we saw from our pre versus post surveys, fruit and vegetable consumption increased in the households. Um, for the parents reporting and the children reporting and the children actually requested more of certain produce. And so we got to thinking, well, if this can work with children and we have such high rates of malnutrition also with adults, will the same results, you know, kind of come about with the adult population here in the community? And that's kind of where the project started. Okay. Great. Now, could you describe the project? Yes, so what, what we're gonna do is we want to actually execute the culinary kits for adults. Um, mm -hmm. We're still kind of discussing how we're going to find the, the adults that we um, are interested in, um, but you know we do have individuals who maybe their family member goes to our, participates in our diabetes hands-on program, mm -hmm. so we're gonna reach out to them and try to get enough individuals on board I'm hoping for about 50 to 100 adults would be good. Um, we're going to do eight culinary kits, one every other week. Um, so it'll be over a span of, of about five months, um, four to five months. And um, we're going to do two recipes in each culinary kit. My educators are going to film themselves executing the actual recipe. Um, in each kit, they'll get the actual recipe cards, a link to where they're going to go to watch the videos, and we'll give them, we expect that the adults will have at least any kind of oil, salt, and pepper and water in their home. Everything else will be supplied. Mm -hmm. They will get two produce options in each box, each recipe, or they may even get three to four, just depends, but the two recipes. Typically we do one sweeter, one more savory. Um, it's not gonna make a full, like complete meal. It's mm -hmm. going to be enough for one serving, unless it's a couple and then we'll give enough for two. And they will get a survey before, at the very beginning and after, before they even start their first kit. And then about their seventh distribution, we'll give them the post surveys and have them fill that out and then they'll drop it off whenever we um, dis, uh, distribute the eighth kit. The last one, yeah. Um, sometimes people can't make it for whatever reason, so I always just have them email it to me um, or take a picture and, you know, text it mm -hmm. to me. And that's how we'll get all of, you know, all of that together. Um, yeah, and it'll be pretty much set up just like for children, but in this situation, it's going to be more adult friendly food. So we're not, we're not going to do like little 
you know, monster cookies or whatever we, <laughs> like we would do. We would do something equivalent for yeah, the adults. Yeah. Something cool. appropriate. Okay. Um, how much are we talking about? Dar how that's much? our dollar amount. Okay. Let me, I have my calculator. Um, so usually we try to get it to where for each kit, each kit's under a, under $5. Mm -hmm. So we're looking hopefully between three to $4,000, probably going towards $4,000. Um, just because we do have a partnership with grow local. So they do give us a discount on produce and, mm -hmm. um, Diagon produce also gives us, um, that. And so we do like to purchase our produce from them. So that's why I, I, I I'm that. not interrupting you, but to the students, I'm going to say, um, one of the things that grantors like to see is partnerships with other mm -hmm. agencies. It means the community is using its resources, um, efficiently. So remember the name mm -hmm. that she just mentioned, grow local South Texas. It's another, uh, nonprofit that it's intended primarily to help farmers encourage people to grow themselves but it also promotes healthy eating so this kind of collaboration between two community groups is going to be appealing to uh, um, a, a granting agency what was what was the other place you said you purchased produce so the other one is called Digon produce but it's spelt like dragon but it's pronounced Digon yeah um, a gentleman named Joel runs it it's a farm to table type produce company and he gets involved with all of the farmers who mm -hmm. provide most of the produce to grow local so we you know recognize his produce company as well okay and uh, that might be something if you've got room depending on who you're writing to and again i'm talking to the students here um but the uh but uh the whole farm to table movement because you know aside from better healthy food keeping more dollars local uh, it's also a lot better for the environment. There's, there's, uh, you know, been a lot, lots of benefits for farm to table uh, stuff other than healthy food, although that's the primary benefit, but, but uh, it's one of those yeah. things that can really benefit lots of constituencies, not just, not just one. So, so uh, remember uh, in grant writing, the more people you can benefit, the more bang you get for your buck and, and that increases the likelihood of your funding. Thanks. <laughs> sorry, sorry for that digression there, Shelby, uh, as well. Um, so I'm just talking a little bit more because you're a dietitian as well. And uh, quoting experts, mm -hmm. students, uh, in, in, in your need statement is important. Uh, if you can, since we have an expert. Um, why is what you're describing, well, I know it's the right term, malnutrition amongst adults a problem. And I know it's basically meaning that not that they're starving, but they're getting the wrong foods. So why is it a problem generally? How does that manifest itself in Corpus Christi? Okay, so I was a clinical dietitian at Bay Area Hospital, mm -hmm. and that's where I saw just the impact of malnutrition. Malnutrition in itself does not happen quickly. It's a progressive thing. And once malnutrition is present, and as it progresses from there, that's whenever we start to see the development of chronic diseases. And so we can see different cancers form. We can see um, early onset Alzheimer's dementia and people who are at risk. We see diabetes. We can see uh, hypertension, congestive heart failure, even kidney disease and kidney failure. And so we have this huge group. And I mean, even multiple diseases of the liver, like cirrhosis, ascites. And the biggest factor that I would see with these individuals, because I would always kind of say, you know, oh, how do you eat at home? You know, because I, I kind of want to get a little bit of the backstory. Mm. Nine times out of 10, there was produce consumed, or it was just fruit. And it would be only about half a fruit serving a day or one fruit serving. So it tells me, because I, what I really want to see is, is there a relationship between the number of individuals who are malnourished? What is the percentage of those individuals who don't consume any produce? Because produce is what contains, that's where you're going to find most of your key minerals and your trace minerals. 
um, in your vitamins. You'll see them in grains, you'll see them in you know animal products as well, but it's the produce. And studies have shown that more produce consumption leads to lower rates of obesity. Um, we know that because it you know, promotes fullness, because many produce items have a lot of fiber. Um, so yeah. Okay, good stuff. Um, so uh, basically the project is, is to assemble these, um, uh, to create these, these boxes and you're looking at, um, did you say uh, approximately 50 clients? Is that what you said? I would like 100, and I know my to, educator. 50 to, 50 to 100 clients, um, yeah. and that you're going to serve over a four to five month period. And yes. um, so, if, if a grant writer were going to be making a timeline, how far from the receipt of funding would it take for you to be able to begin the program? As soon as we receive the funding, we mm. can have the kits ready the next week. Mm. Because if we get a timeline of when the funding should be coming, we'll start to let our recipients of the culinary kits know mm. to expect it around this day. Um, because my educators and I, we can pop out colon 100 culinary kits in two days. Okay, it's not. Cool. cool. We just have uh, to buy the yeah. ingredients. And are they distributed by, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, are they distributed no, okay. by um, by the clients coming to the food bank, or do you deliver, or some combination thereof? Yes, they um, they come to the food bank. If it's a situation where the individual is, you know, low income to the point where they can't afford a car or they can't take public transportation, uh, my educators and I will drop it off at their property or at their home. I'm sure there are lots of other questions I should think of to be asking, but I think that uh, this is a good um, this is a good start. Um, and I think I mentioned this before. I don't want you to get overwhelmed, so I'm going to. Uh, there are only going to be uh, a few students that are designated to contact you. So if students did want to contact you, uh, what would be the best way to do it? Um. I pretty much have my email, like on my, uh, like I have my phone attached to my hip with my email. So my email address is going to be the best way to get a hold of me. And that's, um, the email is S as in Sam Cook. Okay, she, she's freezing up. It's S Cook at coastalbendfoodbank.org. Okay. Let me see. Why does it keep freezing? Uh, could you repeat what you just said? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yes. No, that's okay. Um, the coastalbendfoodbank.org. Right. But yeah, the S cook was was right. I don't know yeah. why my internet keeps going out. It just it it hasn't had its afternoon coffee yet. It needs a Kit Kat bar or a pick me up <laughs> or something like that. A bit of honey maybe. Uh, blood sugar is plunging. <laughs> anyway, um, I thank you so much. Um, I think it's a great project. I think uh, it's the kind of thing that our kids can really. Uh, I, I think our, our kids. I should say it, our students uh, should be able to. Uh, find some good dollars for it to help you out. And um, uh, we're working on it right now already. So thank you for your time, Shelby. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, if they want any other information on just the food bank in general to add, they can just go to our website. Um, we now have it fully updated um, or they can email me with any kind of, you know, sp any more specific questions. Cause sometimes with some grants, they ask questions that you don't think they're gonna ask. It's just yeah, like yeah. Always happens, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Shelby. And uh, you have a good afternoon. And I look forward to working with you. You too, Dr. Etheridge. I'll talk to you later. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.